Hello, in this video I will explain how to solve the inverse kinematics problem for robots with spherical wrists, providing a closed form solution. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to provide a closed form solution to the inverse kinematic problem. Therefore, we will study the case of kinematic decoupling when using a spherical wrist. That will allow us to solve the problem as a problem of positioning the wrist with the first three joints and a problem of orientating the tool with the last three joints. The inverse kinematic problem consists of providing the values of joint positions given a target reference frame, usually provided as a homogeneous transformation matrix T. Obviously, we will assume that we know the constructive parameters of the robot that will allow us to compute the end effector position and orientation so that the problem is reduced to find the values for Q such that the end effector position and orientation are the same as the target ones. Robot manipulators typically have spherical wrists like the one shown in the figure on the left. In this type of wrist the three last axes intersect in a point known as the wrist point. On the other hand, collaborative robots implement a different wrist, where axes B and C are separated by a distance. The first type of wrist will allow us to decouple the inverse kinematic problem so that the first three joints will be used to set the position of the wrist point, while the last three joints will be used to provide the proper tool orientation. The second type of wrist is more complex to solve and this is out of the scope of this video. Therefore, the kinematic decoupling appears when using spherical wrist so that with joints Q4 and Q5 we can uh, set where the tool must be uh, positioned, providing Q6 the actual orientation of the tool as long in a given direction. The wrist point can be computed from the target configuration or position of the end effector and the orientation axis of the tool by subtracting the distance L6 in this slide uh, of the end effector uh, position as shown. Once the wrist point is known then we can compute the desired values for Q1, Q2 and Q3, such as the robot reach or can reach uh, that target uh, wrist point. Once these values are known, then we can compute the target orientation of the end effector with respect to the reference frame 3. We will see that in more detail later. The first robot joint will allow us to point to the desired direction and therefore if we project the wrist point onto the xy plane then we can get the required value for joint 1, as you can see. It's just simply an R tangent of the y coordinate and the x coordinate, as you can see. Now the problem can be seen as a coplanar robot problem, since the other two joints will be contained in the same plane, as highlighted in the figure on the right. The problem is now to find the values for Q2 and Q3 such as that the wrist is separated by the distance R in such plane. Therefore, by considering the problem of the Kuplana robot with being R the separation of the wrist point in that plane, and PWZ minus L1, the height of the wrist point, we can observe that the problem can be solved by decomposing the robot structure into several triangles. In the lower right angle triangle, the hypotenuse and the angle alpha can be computed from the values that we know so far. Also, the distance L3 from the upper right angle triangle can be computed just by if we know the constructive parameters L4 and L5. In the end, there's a triangle in the middle uh, formed by sides L2 
S and O3. So once we know these sides of a triangle, we can use the cosine theorem to find out the values for any angle. In particular, we can compute the angle beta together with alpha will provide us the actual value for the coordinate Q2. Similarly, we can compute the values for the angle gamma and phi from basic trigonometric relations. Once we know those angles, we can compute the value for Q3 as indicated. A very common case is when the distance L4 is zero, which simplifies the formula as indicated below, and the distance L5 and L3 actually are the same distance. The dynamic Hartenberg table shown here is the one that relates all reference frame as indicated in the figure in the right. So, the idea now is that if we know Q1 and Q2 and Q3, then that means that we can compute the orientation of the third link expressed with the matrix R03. Our goal now is to find out the values for Q2 to Q6, uh, sorry, Q4 to Q6, so that the symbolic expressions for the orientation of the end effector with respect to the third link matches with the target orientation. Therefore, if R03 is known and RT, which is the target uh, uh, reference frame, this is a problem datum, that means that we can also compute uh, the numeric values for the matrix R36. And therefore, comparing such matrix with the corresponding symbolic uh, expressions will provide us the hints to get the values for the remainder of joints. We will see that. Therefore, we assume that the numerical values for the matrix R36 can be known as well as the symbolic expression from the dynamic Hartman transformations. Indeed, it can be seen that for joint 5 we can obtain the arc scene of the element R33. If the value is 1 or minus 1, then we are in a singular configuration as a consequence of the well-known gimbal lock problem. In that case, Q5 will be half pi or minus half pi, and the remainder of uh, angles joints Q4 and Q3 will be linear dependent, as we will see. In a general case, anyway, the values for joints 4 and 6 can be computed from the relationships of the elements in the third column and the third row as highlighted. As you can see, there's a common term in all these elements that can be cancelled out if, only if, Q5 is different from half pi or minus half pi. In the singular configuration with Q5 equal uh, to uh, those angles, the symbolic expression uh, uh, simplify to the point that both joints Q4 and Q6 appear in a linear relation. That means that there are infinite possible combinations that will satisfy the actual equation which implies that we need to provide an arbitrary value for one of the joints and then compute the other joint value. In this video, I have explained how to solve the inverse kinematic problem for robots with spherical wrists, providing a closed form solution that can be applied to the vast majority of robot manipulators. Thank you very much.